Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Black Minds Matter broadcast site orientation. We're glad you could all join us. Today's orientation will be brought to you by myself, Dario Blevins, the site coordinator. Many of you or all of you have probably received an email from me and as well as Dr. Um, Luke Wood, who will be the professor for the course, he will also be joining for this orientation. This is our wonderful coordination team. We are comprised of um, master's level and doctoral level students from diverse fields. So we have students from education, counseling, website and technology, as well as video editing and production, who are all working together to make sure that you have an impactful course um, this semester. We would like to extend a special thank you to our sponsors for supporting Black Minds Matter. Our sponsors or partnering organizations include the Campaign for Black Male Achievement, the Education Trust West, uh, who wrote a report a couple years ago titled Black Minds Matter, which looked at experiences and opportunities and outcomes for black learners in California. That report served as an inspiration for this particular course. And as a result, we have asked them to serve as a partner in providing this opportunity to you. In addition, we'd like to thank our partners, Moms of Black Boys United, Mob United, which is a, a, a group, a parent advocacy group that focuses on better supporting mothers of black boys. We'd also like to thank the Center for Organizational Responsibility and Advancement. Cora provides online training programs for teaching and supporting boys and men of color in education. In addition, we'd like to thank our sponsor, our Scholarship Matters, and you can go to their website, OurScholarshipMatters.com. They are, are an apparel company that has provided us with extensive support in marketing and advertising the course, and they have released a special collection of items which we will show you at the end of this broadcast. I first want to draw your attention to the map that's on the screen. Each bubble represented here represents a live broadcast site or a replay site. Um, we first introduced ourselves and we introduced the coordination team, but I wanted to use this time to um, introduce you all and thank you all for also being a part of the team. Um, this course wouldn't be possible and it wouldn't be impactful if it wasn't for people, all of you who um, took on the task of sharing this information with your faculty, staff, students, and members of the community um, across the nation. We'd also like to point out that to date, there are 150 live broadcast and replay sites that will be participating and supporting the Black Minds Matter course. In addition, we have individuals who are registered who will be live streaming the broadcast individually. So there'll be individuals, there'll be live broadcast sites that will be playing the broadcast in real time and replay sites. And as you can see on this map, uh, this this the list of um, wonderful replay sites and live broadcast sites that this course um, is having a, a far and wide reaching um, impact. I'd like to talk to you just briefly now about the purpose of the course. Black Minds Matter is designed to increase the national consciousness about issues facing black boys and men in education. And in particular, what we will do is emphasize strategies and practices that can support the success of this population in, in school, college, and university settings. Myself, as well as a number of other individuals, um, have been engaged in research on this population for a number of years. And as part of that research, we have identified strategies that we know work that are evidence-based strategies that are supported by a litany of research. And so this course, while it will be focused on identifying some of the challenges facing this population, will really be organized around providing recommendations on what we can do to help change the current narrative about black boys and men in education. This course intentionally draws parallels between the Black Lives Matter movement in terms of issues that they've raised about undervaluing of black boys and men and criminalization of this population and looking at those same patterns as it takes place in education. Hence the title of this course, Black Minds Matter. So similar to the Black Lives Movement, the course provides an affirmative statement that black minds do indeed matter. As part of drawing parallels between uh, Black Lives Movement and black minds, 
we will be employing three tenets of the Black Lives Movement as a framework for talking about the issues facing black boys and men. So throughout the course schedule, you will see an emphasis on these tenets, which include loving engagement, collective value, and restorative justice. Now, I will say that another inspiration for this course was, um, was something that occurred one year ago, almost to today. And that was the shooting of Alfred Alongo, an unarmed black male that took place here in San Diego in El Cajon. Many of the students who are in our PhD program, particularly the African American students, were involved in civil resistance and, and protests as part of the response, the community response to that specific event. And as part of conversations that emerged um, after, um, after that, we came up with the idea collectively of having a course that really drew parallels between issues that black students face in, in, in the classroom and patterns that we see in wider society. So I'd like to thank the, those students for serving as the inspiration for this course. Lastly, as you can see, the course purpose, uh, we want to encourage educators to see their classrooms, offices, schoolyards, and campuses as sites for civil resistance through teaching. Now, there are many forms of civil resistance, and the form of civil resistance you might be most familiar with is that of civil disobedience, which was used primarily uh, during the civil rights movement through sit-ins and, and boycotts and protests um, that sought to redress some of the disparities that uh, we saw it at, at those times that oftentimes also continue to today. But we want to talk about what civil resistance looks like in a school and college and university setting. And we believe that a primary tool that educators have to, to dispel and to address the disparities facing black boys and men, particularly through the policies and practices that result in their overexposure to exclusionary disciplines such as suspensions and expulsions, school tracking, placement in special education, um, uh, purposeful uh, practices that oftentimes don't allow them to engage in gifted education and other issues that then continue into college and university settings. We believe that a civil resistance through teaching that empowers this population and communicates love is one primary way that we can do that as educators. And so we will be talking about education as a site of civil resistance, again, through teaching and support practices for this population. Next, we want to cover some student, student learning outcomes. So first, we want to talk about dispositional prerequisites. So these are attitudinal prerequisites. Um, normally, in a course, you'd have a prerequisite of a course that you should have taken before in order to be prepared. And we're asking that in order to be prepared for this course and these conversations that you have two things. So one, acknowledge your own unconscious bias and the effect that it has on the educational experiences of black boys and men. So we acknowledge and we ask everyone to acknowledge that we are all raised and socialized in this society that is ridden with sexism and racism and all other types of oppression and we're programmed to think a certain way. Um, our second is that you engage in your personal responsibility for redressing the disparate educational outcomes for black boys and black men. So just accept a personal responsibility for how you can actively help um, change some of these perspectives. Our course objectives. Um, so after participants participate after participants um, engage in these discussions, we hope that they can take away some of these things. So we hope they'll be able to identify how assumptions of criminality about black boys and men are manifested in schools and in colleges as well as universities. We also um, hope that they'll be able to recognize how socially constructive viewpoints of black males um, and their intelligence decenter them as learners. Uh, we also want everyone to be able to embrace an asset-based view of Black boys that is rooted in the concepts of equity-mindedness as well as institutional responsibility. Um, articulate research-based policies and practices that serve to promote uh, the learning development and success of Black males throughout the educational pipeline. So we'll be talking about um, preschool through university. Now what I would like to do is talk a little bit to you about our course schedule. As you can see, um, this course schedule is from the syllabus, which uh, you were sent last week. 
and it shows just some of the incredible speakers and contributors that we have uh, for this class. You may recognize names such as Patrice Kohlers, Lee Merritt, Sean Harper, Tyrone Howard, Pedro Nagara, Terrell Strayhorn, Jawanza Kunjufu, and many, many, many others who are listed here who have volunteered their time to be able to communicate um, some of the research that they've been doing as well as practice in the field that can better support our boys and men of color in education, particularly our black boys and men. So in week one, I'll just go over a week one schedule. Um, the course begins on October 23rd, uh, 2017. So that's this October. And it will be live broadcast beginning at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. The course will end on December 11th, um, which um, will be the last day of our official course, though we have much material that will be planned that will continue uh, long beyond uh, this course. The first session will go from 4.30 to 6.30 because it is a longer session. Um, and then after that, the rest of the sessions will be about an hour and a half long. And we will show you the different schedules of what that will actually look like um, in the subsequent slides. So for the first week, we will have Ryan Smith, who is um, the head of the Education Trust West. And again, Education Trust West released that report in uh, a couple years ago titled Black Minds Matter. And they are a partner in providing this course. And so Ryan will be here to help lay the foundation for us to understand some of the uh, pervasive challenges that are facing um, our black learners, as well as some of the opportunities uh, that there are as well. We will also then have an interview um, that we've conducted with S. Lee Merritt. Lee Merritt is a civil rights attorney uh, that focuses on police brutality cases. He is involved in a number of the most high profile cases um, that have been uh, sought after and advocated for through the Black Lives Movement. Uh, one of those cases being uh, the Jordan Edwards case. Um, Jordan Edwards, if you're unfamiliar with that case, was a young man who was leaving a party with his friends and was in a car that was driving away from the party and was shot um, unarmed, of course, um, as in many of these cases by police. And so he'll be drawing some of the parallels between what these issues are, again, in wider society, and then bring us to what that looks like in terms of what he has seen from his own perspective and that of his children in education. And then we'll also have Patrice Kohler's uh, who will be gracing us with her time, and she is the co-founder of Black Lives Matter. So that first week will really be then linking Black lives and Black minds. From there, we'll transition primarily to focusing on different topical areas that we think are important. We'll be talking about foundations of practice um, as it relates to research on, on Black boys and men, uh, looking particularly at two concepts, um, looking at masculinity and masculine identity development and anti-deficit or asset-based perspectives. We'll then transition to focusing on ascriptions of intelligence, which really prioritize uh, the belief that black learners are in fact and indeed capable of being successful and in, in many uh, instances are, are gifted learners. And so we've brought on two uh, experts in gifted education who will talk about that. Uh, we'll do assumptions of criminality, which will look at the pervasive criminalization of black boys and men. Uh, we will then switch and then focus more so on what kind of environments that we need to create uh, conditions that allow black male students to learn and thrive. We'll then transition into week six, focused on promising teaching and learning practices. Uh, that week, we will also um, be able to have, as one of our guest speakers, Ilyasa Shabazz, who is an educator and activist and also the daughter of Malcolm X and Dr. Betty Shabazz. Uh, we will, in week seven, talk about holistic support for black male learners. And I'd also like to point out that during that week, we will have Ebony Zamani Gallagher, who is a professor of education at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And Dr. Gallagher has written an incredible uh, post that was um, released in the Huffington Post that talks about the role of women in the conversation on boys and men of color. And so she'll be bringing in a very you know, unique and important perspective as we all engage um, this space. And then lastly, we'll conclude with some, um, it's with speakers who can talk about new directions in terms of where we need to go for supporting uh, policy and research focus on this population. In addition, prior to the course and throughout the course, we will be releasing um, some specific interviews that we think are very important for helping to frame this conversation. 
materials that will be required for this course. Um, we have required books. So here are pictures of our six wonderful books that we'll be using throughout the semester. Um, one is Black Mailed. The next is Building on Resistance, which is going to really give us some asset-based viewpoints. Um, teaching Boys and Young Men of Color, which is a guidebook, which is wonderful for faculty. Um, African-American male students, pre-K through 12 schools as well as advancing black male student success. And this covers preschool through PhD, as well as the teaching men of color in the community college, which is also a guidebook. Um, these books can be purchased online easily on Amazon, as well as on redshelf.com. Um, <clears throat> also, we have article readings that will be associated with each week. Um, these readings are accessible through the hyperlink in the syllabus. So you should be able to click on the link and it should take you directly to um, a PDF of the article. I wanted to direct you to our course website. So all of the information that we've just covered is also listed on the website at jlukewood.com backslash BMM. And so there's a section that covers our speaker list as well as schedule. Our next section has all of the readings um, and our third section has the interviews with key leaders that we spoke about. They'll be in videos. And our last section, section four, um, covers resources. Uh, on to our broadcast day technical procedure. So this is how you'll be joining in the conversation. If you're our live stream site, then your broadcasting and your discussions will occur on Mondays. The way that you will access the site is through a Zoom link, just similar to the one that we provided you with today. If you are a replay site, that means that your broadcast and discussions will occur on Wednesday or another day that you selected that is best for your population or your participants. We ask that you access the videos through a subscription to um, our YouTube page, which is at youtube.com backslash jlukewood. Um, all of the course videos are hosted on this site and will be there um, indefinitely after we do our live broadcast on Monday. So we'll post those videos there on Wednesday. Here's an example of how your daily broadcast will go. So it should look similar um, if you are a live stream site or if you're a replay site, it should pretty much go like this. So you will welcome your participants and ask them to sign in. Um, you may also want to introduce the theme for that week. Next, you will show the lecture, which is the video, and the video will have this following format. It will have opening commentary from Dr. Wood, which will take about 15 minutes. Um, then it will transition into interviews with guests and speakers, which will be about 65 minutes. And then we'll come back and have closing commentary for about 10 minutes from Dr. Wood that will summarize the discussions <clears throat> that we had with the key leaders. You will then turn off your video, turn off your Zoom, and engage with your participants on site. Um, we suggest th that you give a short break just to let people um, stretch their legs and then break out into your group discussions for about 20 minutes and then allow a little time for closing words or allow groups to share out and what they discussed um, during their group discussions. Here are your week one discussion questions. And so we will make discussion questions available um, at least one week in advance for every week. Um, one of the questions is, what are common stereotypes about Black boys and men in society? So the week one theme is linking Black lives and Black minds. And so we're just trying to um, bring parallels between Black lives matter and Black minds matter. One of the questions is digging um, a little deeper and really asking, with the Black Lives Movement, how have they really engaged civil, ex civil resistance and how can we engage? So the questions will not just be um, theoretical discussion, but also um, strategizing and brainstorming on actual practices that participants can employ um, today, the day that they're having the discussion, as well as the next day as they go out into their workplaces, and also asking how do we evaluate um, our support for Black lives and Black minds. 
more about group discussion. So as we said, um, the questions will be provided to you beforehand. Also for larger groups, consider adding co-facilitators. So it may be more reasonable to break into small groups to have these discussions. We also ask that you establish ground rules with your participants. We have a list of some ground rules or group agreements as we call them that we've used in the past during conversations like this. We usually start out with a question of what ground rules are needed to create a safe environment during, during this discussion. We envision this course to be a space for people to be able to process um, as well as speak with individuals who may have points that differ from their own. And so we ask that they critique ideas and not individuals, listen actively and with an ear for understanding of others. Um, I want to draw your attention to the third step, which is step up and step back. So step up is really calling for folks who are more introverted or they would be naturally um, listeners. And so we're asking them to step up. It's someone like myself who is naturally an introvert and feel more free to share. And then step back is asking folks who are more comfortable speaking in large groups to take a step back and allow quieter folks to share their opinions as well. I also wanna draw your attention to our um, second to last point, which is confidentiality. Um, a lot may be shared during this conversation that folks don't want others to know. So please um, set a climate and a culture of respect and of confidentiality when you're having these conversations. Also being conscious of time. So we're all broadcasting during different times of the day. And so be conscious of, of folks' times. My last point is these conversations can trigger and bring up um, uh, sensitive topics for people and so it may be useful for you to reach out to mental health professionals who are trauma-informed and who are also culturally responsive in order to meet the needs of the individuals that you are participating with especially with um, the climate of today they may be met with some more opposition than is anticipated Um, these are some participant expectations that we have set out. So we ask that you have your participant sign in daily. A part of their sign in is a commitment to the expectations and the course agreements that we have set out and also that you all will have created together. Um, we also ask that cell phones be turned off or set to vibrate during the class and only be answered in the case of an emergency. We ask that you complete the readings so we know that in order to have an informed conversation, we all need to be informed and on the same page. So if everyone has done the readings, then it makes the conversation um, that much more fruitful. Um, view the session. So encourage your participants, if they were not able to um, view the live viewing or come in, into that week's group discussion, that you point them towards the YouTube page so that they can watch the videos on their own and be able to participate in the conversations that are to come. We also ask that there's no recording. So in order to maintain the integrity of the course and of the learning environment, it's important that everyone knows that the information that they share will be kept confidential and not taken into any other spaces. site engagement and so we wanted to give some tips on how to keep folks engaged throughout the course one it may be helpful to send reminder emails that have your location your date your time any updates that you need to give to your participants it may also help to reach out to departments that would feel comfortable offering extra credit for students who participate um, we want to encourage you to keep the conversation going using the hashtag black minds matter um, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. We may occasionally um, put up a poll or a question and we encourage you to do the same. Um, consider allowing your attendees um, to bring snacks or to provide snacks if you can. Um, we know that this time may be dinner time or an in-between time where folks really need some nourishment in order to properly participate. Also consider the needs um, that you may have for childcare. So it may be helpful to um, solicit some volunteers that can work with the children while their parents or caregivers are engaging in this conversation. We also want to remind you just to ensure that this is a welcoming and in safe environment um, for all who are participating in the discussion. 
Here's an example of how on our campus here at San Diego State, we engaged um, students. So one of the pictures on the left is of um, undergraduate students who are holding up our Black Minds Matter shirts that were provided to us by one of our sponsors, Our Scholarship Matters. Um, we initially asked students to come in and write what they thought of after reading the words Black Minds Matter what came to them, what was uh, meaningful to them, and then share those thoughts on our Blackboard. And then they were given a shirt. We also asked that after they participated with us on site, they took their um, engagement onto social media. And so we have an example of one of our doctoral students who posted um, on Instagram with her shirt on and she used the hashtag Black Minds Matter as well as hashtag Our Scholarship Matters. Um, one thing that's important about using these particular hashtags is that we can track and we can see um, each other, whoever's posting using this hashtag, if you use the same one. It's also important to note that the hashtag Black Minds Matter will be used for, for participant engagement. So during the actual live session for those who want to pose questions to the guest speakers, they would need to post it um, on using that hashtag for us to be able to see it. I'd also like to note that again, um, our Scholarship Matters is one of our partners. Uh, they have been incredibly generous and have provided us with a number of different resources um, that we have been able to use to advertise this course. So, you know, the, pro the proceeds um, go to, to them and their organization, which is designed to intentionally broaden awareness for promoting diversity. Um, they have a line of shirts and, and other apparel resources that they've created. So if you feel that that would be something that would be beneficial for your site to um, have access to, definitely check out um, their collection of Black Minds Matter apparel. And you can go to OurScholarshipMatters.com or there is a more specific link that directs you to, um, to their collection at the bottom. Lastly, I wanted to make note of who you can contact if you have any questions, issues, concerns, or compliments um, about our course. So I'm the site coordinator. You can email me with any questions about your site, and I included my um, email address. Also, once you start broadcasting, you may end up having technical questions. So we ask that you first contact your IT person that is on site if you have one. They may be able to help with your targeted need. And if they aren't able to, or you do not have an IT person available, you can contact Karan Jane, who is our IT and website um, person. And I also included his email address. Also, if you are watching the uh, video, particularly if you're a replay site and you're using YouTube, you would want to contact um, their um, support structure. Okay, so now what we would like to do is to switch to questions that were posed to us during the, the live viewing of this orientation. So one was about resources for um, advertising um, for site engagement. After, um, after this uh, webinar, we will be sending out to each site a PowerPoint of, this actual, of these actual slides. We will be sending a recording um, that you will receive as part of this email. In addition, we will also uh, attach a draft flyer that will allow you to just make simple changes if you want to use that for advertising in your local area. Um, a course logo, in case you want to use that, as well as a copy of the syllabus. Now, the syllabus is available, again, through the course site. If you go to jlukewood.com backslash BMM, BMM, of course, standing for Black Minds Matter, um, you can see all the resources that we've made available, um, including hyperlinks to the course readings. Uh, Second thing we wanted to point out um, is again, the engagement for the actual live session will be done using, using the hashtag Black Minds Matter. Um, you can also uh, tag me uh, at jlukewood um, if, you're on, um, if you're on Instagram or Facebook or on Twitter at Dr. Luke Wood, and I can um, also be able to see the questions there and then pose them to our guest speakers. In addition, um, it's important to note that for those who are participating as a live site, uh, we will be doing some polls that will take place during the actual course. Now, the polls are really designed for individual learners um, because they will be watching as individuals and they can respond quickly. But if a site wants to respond, we'd encourage you to just take a quick tally in terms of how people would like to respond and then to post that there. 
That's important to note because if you're a replay site, you won't have access to that, but you will be able to see the people participating and of course their responses to that. Um, we also received questions about the uh, resources that are available to learners in terms of the books. So the books, again, um, you can get, get the access to those books through amazon.com or through Redshelf. One of the things that we are doing here at our site at San Diego State, which is of course the, the, broadcast, the main broadcast site, is that we are uh, getting a couple copies of each book and then putting them in a library for individuals who want to either come by and read them in the office or who want to then come by and borrow them for a day or two at a time. Now we recognize that most sites won't have access to the actual course books. So what we've done is we've created a list of readings um, that are in the syllabus. Um, these are readings for each week, as well as what we call our top 20 reads, must reads for those who are doing work in this space. And those are online articles, and we've provided hyperlinks to those articles, and that will be included in the syllabus that is attached um, to this communique, as well as the syllabus that is on the course site. We've received questions um, from our sites that are on the East Coast about whether they should be a live site or a replay site. Um, we believe that the, the decision is totally up to you. The broadcast will begin at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. So obviously if you're on the East Coast, that will be several hours later. So some East Coast sites have made the decision that um, it would be better to do a replay. Most of the replay sites are taking place on Wednesday, though you can replay, of course, at any time um, that you would like to. Um, though we will be encouraging people to access the link from Wednesday or thereafter. So some sites are even doing a week delay. Um, whatever is best for you um, is fine with us. Um, either way, if you want to change your status, please email us um, and we will be able to make that change for you. In addition, some sites have asked about individual registration. If I have a, people who are participating as individuals who are, uh, who are part of my site, who are, who are there in my site, so they're not actually individuals who are registered, but are individuals who are part of my site, should they then register as individuals for the actual class? And the answer is that they don't have to. But what we do encourage is that every individual, whether they are a person who is a part of a live broadcast site, a replay site, or even, or even just an individual learner, that they subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is because we will be primarily delivering content through the YouTube channel. The replays of each course, the interviews with selected individuals, so we would want you to basically be able to access it via that. The other information that we'd like to point out is that uh, we will be eliciting feedback both from the sites, live broadcast and replay, as well as individual learners that are part of a course. And so what we'll be doing is that after each course session, we will have a short survey that will go out that will ask information, some of it about um, just the, the technology, um, some of it about the course content, but we'll be using it as a way of gaining feedback in, ter in terms of making sure that we're on track to provide you with the best learning experience possible and that we're providing information that's absolutely relevant and useful. Um, we will be part of a large group of a community of learners. We expect that there will be up to, up to or more than 10,000 people who will be participating in this course, either as individuals or through the live broadcast and replay sites. And so we will be having different groups that will be broken up into different communities that will be participating. And so we wanna make sure that we're really addressing the needs of this wide group of community of learners. Um, there was also questions asked about being able to um, reproduce the materials and how long the materials themselves would be up. We plan to keep the course website, again, jlukewood.com backslash BMM, up permanently. Uh, we also plan to keep the videos on the YouTube channel up permanently. And we would encourage that anyone who desires to use those um, after the course um, for, for other um, learning activities would, would do so. We encourage that. We do, of course, hope that you will um, use proper attribution in terms of the guest speakers and uh, the place uh, that this information is originating from, which is a Black Minds Matter course. So we would ask that you do that. Um, and there is, of course, permission to do so. Um, there was a question um, that was asked earlier, though we did address it already, um, about the discussion questions. Uh, we will be sending out the discussion questions in advance. By the first week of class, you will have uh, questions for the first four weeks, and then we will be providing um, weekly updates on the rest of the questions as we move through the, through the actual course. 
Um, we have already provided you with the week one questions that are in this, um, as well as in the PowerPoint that's attached to this communique. Um, we also hope that for those who have not been able to participate in the actual live stream of this webinar, that you will make this available to them. So if you have other individuals that are part of hosting this with you, uh, I would encourage them to be able to participate in this as well. Um, lastly, um, we've received several questions um, that are about the focus of this course, uh, specifically on being on um, black minds matter, but a focus on black boys and men in education, and whether or not there will be content that's focused on women and girls. Um, so here are a, a couple of responses to that. One, we've tried to ensure that between our speakers and interviewees that we have a, a wide um, diversity in terms of gender representation. So you'll see that a number of individuals are, are representative of different backgrounds, and that has been purposeful. The second thing I'd point out is that Dr. Ebony Zvani Gallagher, again, will be addressing um, issues as it relates to what is, um, you know, how, what are the roles of, of women in these important conversations on boys and men of color. Lastly, we also recognize that um, there is a need for further conversations that are gendered in a way that focus on girls and women. And so next semester, uh, we will be having, not next semester, but next year, we will be having a course that's focused on uh, black feminist thought in education, and we hope that that will be a class that will be live streamed. Um, and so, uh, separate from that, and in addition to that, we will be releasing um, as part of week two of this course um, a set of resources in terms of readings and publicly available videos that focus on issues that are relevant to black girls and women in education. Um, we want this conversation. Um, on black boys and men to be one that is additive, not subtractive. We don't want to subtract from necessary and important conversations on black learners of all genders, those who are gender nonconforming, uh, those who are transgender, those who are women, those who are, uh, are of other backgrounds. We don't want this to take away from any group of learners. We want this conversation to be additive, to add a, an important lens and conversation on black minds. Um, but again, we also feel like because of the, the important um, and critical issues that are facing our girls and women, that we will be releasing some additional information that we hope uh, sites can uh, then incorporate into the ongoing conversations that will be taking place. So with that, we'd like to um, thank you for participating in this, and we want to thank you for being advocates for our boys and men of color. Thank you all, and we will all be in contact soon.